It's Josh Vigar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And here with the brand new Oppo N3, we wanted to put it against one of the flagship phones that it can squarely compete against, and that is the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. When it comes to of the size differences we do get a slight bump up in the screen size for the samsung galaxy note 4 but as far as the actual devices go the n3 is pretty much on par with the size of the note 4 overall and that means you'll get a pretty similar uh handling experience but the metal construction of the note 4 has really elevated the note line to an even better place when it comes to design you could say the same thing about the oppo n3 primarily because it has shrunken down from the 5.9 inch display from the original n1 and thus it actually makes this package a lot more accessible than it was before when that screen was just way too big. Aesthetically, Samsung and Oppo stick to their guns as the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 retains the same button layout on the bottom as well as the S Pen that is nestled in the bottom right. Oppo, on the other hand, has kept their white-on-white -white design with capacitive keys of below that 5.5-inch screen. And of course, we have some additions with the rear fingerprint scanner, the O-Touch area as it is called, and the top rotating camera. The display situation is where the N3 does fall behind just a little bit because its 1080p resolution screen is simply trounced by the Note 4's Quad HD display. Now, for all intents and purposes, the differences between these two in terms of resolution might not be seen by the general user, but it is something to take uh, into consideration. Nonetheless, the N3 did show some pretty nice colors and some nice brightness from its TFT construction, uh, while the Note 4 continues to still show how Samsung has a great prowess when it comes to their screen technology. While the spec sheet will favor the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 just a little bit, especially because it has the updated Snapdragon 805 underneath, the N3 uh, does have the Snapdragon 801, which still should provide the same type of flagship experience you would want from a phone like this. And with the updated KitKat version of ColorOS, you can expect that the N3 will still fly through everything that it needs to, as opposed to the feature-rich TouchWiz, which does uh, perform as well as it ever has for a Samsung device, but still plenty of people out there might be uh, high hypersensitive to the type of lag you might find in this interface. Nonetheless, as far as the rest of the specifications go, they are pretty similar in story. What happens in the N3 is we now have a micro SD card slot that is available to bolster uh, the uh, 32 gigabytes of storage underneath. The same can be had for the Note 4, though the Note 4 does have a removable back cover that will allow you access to its battery. Both of these phones now have a fast charging apparatus available now, but the VOOC fast charging originally introduced in the Oppo Find 7 has been shrunken down a little bit, so you can actually use it in more places, whereas the big brick of the Find 7 is one that you might not have been able to bring around all the time. Nonetheless, rapid charging is available on both of these devices and they do work quite a treat. Fingerprint scanning between these two phones is a feature that they can both boast, but the uh, scanner on the Note 4 is one that you have to swipe over the home button on the bottom. Now, no matter which way you slice it, it's a little bit awkward to use from time to time, and it is definitely not quite as easy to use as the Oppo N3s. Now, the N3's uh, back fingerprint scanner allows you to just rest your finger on the scanner and then press it down as it is also a button, and you will immediately get into the interface from a prone standby position. It's a great feature for the N3, and Honestly, I think it is a better implementation of fingerprint scanning than it is on the Samsung device. It's in the camera that we're going to have to wait for uh, our full review units uh, with the N3 in order to really see how its quality matches up to what has already been a pretty good, pretty great camera on the Note 4. The Note 4 does have 16 megapixels, as does the N3, but uh, optical image stabilization is something the Note 4 has, whereas the N3 is simply does not have that. But the enhancements in the actual rotation of the top camera uh, is due to a motor inside that can automate the movement. And if you use the O click, you will be able to just press a couple of buttons on there and it will move the camera for you without you having to do so. It's nice to be able to do that so you can use a remote in order to frame your shot and then you'll be able to take it from there. While the N3 does definitely have some tricks up its sleeve, the Note 4 has the trump card that it has always had in its line, and that is the S Pen. This stylus experience is one that many users probably do use or simply do not, and either way, they have a good time with the Note. But in the Note 4, the S Pen has provided an even better uh, apparatus for daily usage, especially with the Note taking uh, applications, but the ability to use it like a mouse to click and drag for selections across the operating system is, in my opinion, a game changer for the S Pen. And that is really one of the better ways that the S Pen has enhanced smartphone life, especially for Note users. 
It really comes down in this particular verses onto whether or not you need a stylus experience or you need a very powerful front facing camera when it comes to the N3. The N3 does have a very nice quirky camera up top, but it is up to the camera quality to really uh, sort of justify if it is a very good addition to have or just a novelty. Luckily though, with the N3, we now have a particular package that is very accessible. So we can say that the camera up top should still be able to provide some good experiences, but the phone itself is now something you could use on the daily because it is not way too big like the N1 was. In the case of the Note 4 though, the Note 4 has a huge following and it still continues to be a great phone in its own right. So in this case, we're going to see when we get our full review unit of the N3, how these two really stack up, especially when it comes to camera quality. So keep it tuned to Android Authority for our full verses between these two phones. I just wanted to give you this quick look here at the launch event in Singapore. Once again, this is Joshua Vergar of Android Authority bringing you our coverage of the Oppo N3 here at the launch.